This is week 10 and the end of the fall trimester of my Atelier Diary. And this week I wrapped up both of my projects. So I officially finished up my figure painting and so this figure painting took five weeks to complete so this last week was all about the resolving. And also this week was during our Thanksgiving break so Thursday and Friday and the weekend we had on holiday and then coming that next week then we made up those two days. For resolving the painting um, I did a lot of correcting proportions, which I really have been doing this whole entire painting process and just really being as critical as I can. So for Delon's, the arm that's hanging down, I thickened that up a little bit because it was getting a little too thin. And then also for his legs, I thinned those out, especially around the ankles and made sure that there was enough transitions from the shadows going into the lighter areas. And then also from the lights, making sure that the light spread evenly and as naturalistically as possible down the figure. Trying to finish up this painting, I put a lot of attention on creating as much atmosphere and space in the painting as I could. So I worked a lot with the background and doing subtle shifts in the background, making things darker or sharper, uh, either like heightening up the contrast or lowering the contrast to make things look like they are coming forward or push farther back in the atmosphere, which also gives gives the effect, like if it has higher contrast, the line will usually look sharper, and then vice versa. If the contrast is pretty low between the background and the form of the figure, the lines will look softer and a little more blurred. So for example, for Delon's extended arm, that part in the painting is the closest to the viewer, so I really wanted to make it look like it was in the painting, so it looked like it was coming out of the atmosphere a bit more and so to do that um, I really bumped up the contrast. So for the part of the arm that's in shadow I lightened up the background there so it had con like a lighter background compared to the super dark shadow and also made sure that the lines were sharp where they needed to be to like really strengthen it to look, make it look like it was popping out. And when I say sharp lines, they're st still not razor sharp because usually nothing in the figure is razor sharp because when you make it super sharp, it can make it start to look photographic and unnatural. So I'm saying sharp, but relative to everything else. And then also for the top of the arm where it's the lightest and has the highlight on it, for the background, then I push the background there that touches up against the form of the highlight pretty dark. And so overall, I'm happy with that arm. I think it does look like it have, has a lot of space around it. And then also that the arm is coming forward more than anything else in the painting. And then contrasting that for the other arm that's hanging down more um, to make it look different and like it's more like going back in the atmosphere, I just made sure that the background tones were relatively pretty close to the values of the arm. So that arm looks like it recedes more into the atmosphere. So the contrast is pretty low. And one last thing that I wanted to mention while I was wrapping up the figure at the end of this week is that I was repainting Delon's shoulders and his feet quite a lot in this last week to try and make the forms look round and solid as they actually look in nature. I was noticing that things were kind of looking flat and I was taking um, books out from the library and comparing master paintings to mine and seeing that my forms kind of looked flat and I was remembering like what I was doing these last five weeks painting this. But I think what I was doing was I wasn't, I was looking at the shapes of tone, but not really thinking about how they actually sit on a plane. And so the structure of Delon looks not as three-dimensional and like the structure of planes that I see in nature um, as much as I would like it to in my painting. And so Matt reminded me a trick that you can do, which is to get up close to your painting and pretend that you're an ant walking along the form of the thing you painted and to make sure that you know the ants like going up and down the form as he actually should so you're really thinking then about the literal planes of the figure and not like just shapes of tone then and then another trick that you can do to even push that concept further is you take a mirror so if this hand is the painting you get pretty close up to the painting and you take this hand is the mirror. Um, I tilt it to the side and I look in the mirror pretty close to the painting and so that way you're not thinking about like the skin wrapping over the rib cage but it when you're up that close and that it's tilted it really abstracts it in your mind so it really does look more like a landscape rather than a figure. 
And so that way you can be really critical and make sure that the form is really moving how it should be. And now for my cast drawing. I am officially done with this drawing and I'm really, really, really excited about it. Um, finishing up this drawing the last week or two weeks really, really has all been about doing the resolve, which is really focusing on a unifying tone and edges. I think I've probably said that for the cast section of like all my past videos, but um, taking a drawing this far and just like the really light values that I have for it, it's really uh, just, you know, proved to me how far you can push a painting to have a really satisfying resolve when like literally you're just focusing on edge quality, making sure that the tones blend out like they're as soft or as sharp and have as many varying edges and then also just making sure that tones are unified so things aren't looking over modeled but um, really as simple tones as possible can really take a drawing really really far and I posted a few pictures of the drawing and some close-ups on my Facebook and my Facebook page and Instagram and I had some people ask why the paper looks like that because it looks like there's folds in the paper and this drawing is pretty big it's 42 by 44 inches which is the biggest drawing that I've ever done and so um, I do my transfer drawings and this is just a transfer drawing I did my I do my transfer drawings on Canson paper and um, they don't have Canson paper that big at least not that I could find so I just took four sheets of Canson paper and pushed them together and then there's tape on the back so creating it one piece out of four pieces of paper. This drawing was supposed to be like a quick, I thought I was going to get it done in, in two weeks just to get like study the image and kind of map out the form so then I could use this transfer drawing to put on my canvas to do the painting but I just got really carried away and had way too much fun to stop until I felt like it had a nice resolve over the whole piece. Um, so I think I ended up spending, instead of two weeks, I think it was five to six weeks probably of working on it and coming in every weekend to work on it as well. I just f fell in love with it and had a lot of fun. So, But I actually kind of like seeing the seams of the paper on this drawing because I think it gives it a more interesting look to it because the drawing is literally like an atlas for how I'm going to be making the painting. So it, it literally is a, a map for the painting. So um, having the seams that almost looks like fold, I think it just makes it look more so like, like a study material or like a map. So I actually think it's pretty cool. I am officially on winter break now, so I have a lot of things that I'm excited that I have time to get done now art-wise. Um, I also had my final critique, which was at the end of my last week of school. And so final critique, you take all of your work from the trimester and it's a private critique between um, the student and the two instructors Matt and Magda and I'm gonna make a video uh, about how my final critique was because they tell you tell you your strengths and weaknesses and things that you can do over the break to um, just to keep improving and I also need to make some more videos over the finished projects that I've done over the trimester so with winter break now I'll have time to shoot edit and post up some videos pretty soon